Hello, and welcome to our notes on plate boundaries. Remember, during the course of this uh, note, these notes, you can pause, rewind, take as much time as you need to fully understand and get all the information down that you need. Uh, so let's go ahead and go. Plate tectonic boundaries and what happens at each one. Uh, the plates we've talked about are made of lithosphere and they are actually all interconnected. We've been talking about them as separate plates, but if we look at the, the globe, uh, they appear to be moving at different relative speeds and independently of each other. But remember, it is an entire jigsaw puzzle of plates and they are interconnected. No one plate can move without affecting others and the activity of one can influence another thousands of miles away. If you had an entire jigsaw puzzle and you pulled one end of it, the entire jigsaw puzzle would come with it. So here are all the plates and they're moving. So if this one right here, the Pacific plate is moving this direction and this one is moving this direction, then something's going to happen in between. And this one can't move this way without affecting this one here, which in turn affects this one here and so on and so forth. It's a big chain reaction. It is one globe and they are all, uh, there's you know crust around the entire thing all the time. So one movement from one will affect all the others. And indeed they are all moving all the time, just very, very, very slowly. Um, so what exactly is a plate boundary then? A plate boundary is where tectonic plates meet. And we can look at this map and we can see everywhere there's this big black line, the outline of plate, we know that a plate is meeting there. And so every place that there is a plate that meets another plate, we have a plate boundary. So what are the types? What types of plate boundaries do we have? There are actually three of them. They are totally separate, totally unique. Uh, one is called a divergent plate boundary. The other two are convergent and transform, and they look kind of like this. So we're going to go through them one by one by one, and we'll start with um, this first one, the divergent plate boundary. And here it is. It is a boundary where two plates are moving apart from each other. And when that happens, new lithosphere is created. That's very important. Make sure you write that down. As this plate moves this way and this plate moves this way, remember this is crust plus litho lithosphere, uh, it leaves a gap in the middle. So what happens? The asthenosphere, the magma in the asthenosphere bubbles up and it fills the gap. And when that magma gets to the surface, it hardens and becomes new lithospheric plates. And uh, so we are actually creating new plates here. Now, divergent boundaries can take place at two different areas of the Earth. The first is if it happens in the ocean. Um, we actually call it seafloor spreading because the seafloor appears to be spreading apart and it forms a mid-oceanic ridge. So I want you to make sure you write down in the ocean, you get a mid-oceanic ridge. Here is a picture of the globe again, and this is actually uh, from a satellite. And you can see these black lines are actually underwater, under sea and under ocean mountains or ridges that are forming as the plates spread apart from each other. So here we have uh, South America and Africa. South America is going this way to the left and Africa is going this way to the right. And they are spreading and what's forming is this mid-oceanic ridge. So here's a, a side view of what would be happening. Here's our convection currents and they are going in this case opposite directions. So our plate one here is moving to the left and our plate two is moving to the right. And as they spread, they're leaving room for magma to come on up. And as it touches the water, it cools off and becomes more lithospheric plate. And we get this, uh, we get this little mountain area here or a mid oceanic ridge forming. Now the other place a divergent boundary can happen is on the land. And if it happens in the land, we call it a rift valley. So again, make sure you write down divergent boundary on land gives you a rift valley. So again, we have two plates that are spreading apart from each other, is leaving a gap where the asthenosphere bubbles up and it forms new uh, lithosphere. But unlike the ocean where the asthenosphere is able to push out because of the because of the um, the water in the air it tends to actually make a valley an opposite of a 
um, ridge. So here's a, a, a huge rift valley in Africa and you can see here's the edge of one plate and over here's the edge of the other plate and in here we have our rift valley. Now over um, millions and millions and millions of years eventually these plates will go so far apart that ocean or sea from some direction is going to fill this in and then eventually we'll get um, the same thing happening as happened in the ocean where we'll form eventually oceanic ridge and seafloor spreading. But on land we get a rift valley. So that's our two different possibilities for a divergent boundary uh, both in the ocean and on land. Our next uh, plate boundary interaction that we're going to talk about is called a transform plate boundary and this here is our transform boundary. We have two plates and they're going in opposite directions here. Not pulling apart, just going in opposite directions. So here's our, our definition. Um, a transform plate boundary is when two plates are sliding next to each other going in opposite directions. And sometimes they call it a transform fault. So here we have two plates. One lithospheric plate is going this way and one lithospheric plate is going the other way and we have in between what's called a transform fault and every one of these little dots is actually representing an earthquake because you guessed it the thing that forms that transform out uh, plate boundaries are earthquakes it is uh, probably the biggest cause of earthquakes are transform faults um, although our last fault boundary can make them too but the majority are, are transform um, and the way it happens is as the plates slide past each other, these are huge pieces of rock and they're not super smooth. They don't, they don't just slide past each other easily. So they're going to get caught and the pressure is going to build up. And when the plates finally slip through, you're going to get a herk and a jerk and that pressure gets released and we get an earthquake. And so here's a little uh, picture of one plate moving one way and another plate going the other way and if they get caught here as soon as that that uh, getting caught slips we're gonna get an earthquake that's gonna send out seismic waves and we'll have a whole um, note about earthquakes once we get past uh, this unit uh, so we'll learn all about it in much more detail but that's the basics now one of the largest transform faults in the entire world is the San Andreas Fault and it's right here in California. So here's a map of California and you can see the San Andreas Fault here. It's over 800 miles long and it goes from the northern part of California right past San Francisco and then jumps on a land and it goes through the middle of the, uh, the state here and then it makes a turn and it's a uh, goes right past Palmdale and Palm Springs and right down here there's a, a sea called the Salton Sea and here's Los Angeles and right here by the P in Palm Springs actually is where we are in Long Beach. So we are oh say 50 or 60 miles from one of the largest transform faults in the world um, and that's why we are in such a, a danger for a huge earthquake. Um, here's an aerial view taken from a uh, plane of what the San Andreas Fault looks like. Uh, you don't really get anything forming here. No lithospheres being made and, and none's being destroyed because the plates are just sliding past each other. Um, this line here is actually a highway uh, that you would drive on a car. So anytime you drive from Los Angeles or Long Beach out to let's say um, Las Vegas, you are crossing the San Andreas Fault to get there. And uh, again, the Right here where we live on LA, we're on the Pacific plate and we're moving north. And the rest of the country, including the rest of California, is on the North American plate and it's moving south. So our last type of plate boundary is called a convergent plate boundary. Uh, here's a little picture to kind of show you. And convergent, that's from converge, which means to come together. Um, convergent plate boundaries are where locations where lithospheric plates are moving towards one another and when that happens lithosphere is being destroyed. Now remember the earth doesn't get bigger or smaller so if at the divergent boundaries we're making new land, making new lithosphere, we have to have somewhere else in the earth where the the 
land is being destroyed and it's at the convergent plate boundaries. And we have actually three different types of convergent plate boundaries. So we'll talk about that in a second. How the lithosphere gets destroyed is called subduction. Um, and subduction is the process by which one tectonic plate, and it's always an oceanic plate, moves other an another tectonic plate and it sinks into the Earth's mantle and it gets melted and destroyed. So here are two plates and one of them, again, always, always, always an oceanic plate, gets pushed down or subducted down. And once it gets down here into the mantle, it starts to melt because this is just rock and magma is hot and it, the magma is just melted rock. So it starts to melt. And oftentimes we do get this situation where some of that magma starts to bubble up and we get volcanic activity. So let's look at the three types of conversion plate boundaries. We have when two continental um, crusts come together, we have when two oceanic crusts come together, and we have when an oceanic meets a continental. So let's go through one by one and see what forms at each. Um, so we're going to start with the, the mix. So if we have an oceanic crust meeting a continental crust, again, oceanic always loses. It's actually because it's heavier. The continental crust is made mostly of granite, and the oceanic crust is made mostly of basalt. And basalt is a heavier rock than continental. So the continental crust tends to float a little higher on the asthenosphere, and the oceanic crust tends to float a little lower on the asthenosphere. So when they meet, continental gets pushed up, and oceanic gets pushed down. And what forms here is a trench. And again, because when that uh, oceanic crust starts melting. Usually some magma gets uh, released up and so we get a volcanic arc or a volcanic mountain range arc in this case. So if, if the volcanoes are forming on land, they're going to actually make mountains which are going to be a, a mountain range arc of volcanoes. Now if we have two oceanic plates meeting, We've kind of got an even thing, oceanic versus oceanic. Now over here we have continental, but up here, right where they're meeting, it's oceanic versus oceanic. So one of them's going to get pushed down. And again, we're going to get a trench forming in the ocean. And this time, there's no land for the volcanoes to make mountains. So those volcanoes are going to make mountains under the earth. And we're going to, once they, once they are under the ocean, and once they finally break through the, through the ocean, they're an island. So this is what's called a volcanic island arc instead of a, uh, a mountain arc. Our last one here is a convergent boundary between two continental crusts. So in this case, we don't necessarily have subduction. Um, a lot of times what happens is they just both get pushed up and we get a what are called folded mountains. So high folded mountains, they get pushed up and usually a plateau, which is a, a, law, a high area that's flat. Now, the tallest mountains in the world were actually formed by a convergent plate boundary between two continental crust boundaries. And here it is. We have the Indian plate, continental crust, crashing into the Eurasian plate, continental crust. And we are, we, what we get is the Himalaya mountains here and the Tibetan Plateau. So we have a high plateau and really huge folded mountains here. The highest of which is right there. It's Mount Everest. And it is 24,870 feet. So super high. I think the highest mountain in California is Mount Whitney. And I think it's about 14,000 feet. So Mount Everest is almost twice as high as California's highest mountain. Um, super high. Uh, you have to actually have an oxygen mask to climb it, and, and a ton of people have died trying to climb it, so not something I would do. Um, so let's review really quick the three types and what happens at each. First, we have divergent. Uh, it's a spreading motion, and it is constructive, meaning lithosphere is being created, and we're going to get a ridge, or again, if it's in, on land, we'll get a rift valley. And oftentimes, we'll have volcanic uh, activity there as uh, that magma comes out between the two plates. Then we jump over to the other side here. We did transform, which is a sliding motion. 
and it's called conservative, meaning lithosphere is not made or destroyed. And nothing really forms. There's no topography, no mountains or anything like that usually really making. Um, and it doesn't usually have any kind of volcanic activity, although we do have earthquakes, 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 earthquakes. The last one is convergent. And again, we get a subduction motion because they're crashing into each other. It is destructive because the lithosphere is being destroyed. Uh, we almost always get a trench and often volcanoes. And this um, plate boundary can also cause earthquakes. Um, this was the case in the most recent earthquake off Japan's coast that caused that huge tsunami a few years ago. That was actually a convergent plate boundary. Um, so that is our three plate boundaries and what forms at each. Make sure you know the names of them, the motion, uh, whether lithosphere is being made or not, or destroyed, uh, and what forms at each one. In the comments for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to a website that has little animations for each one. And the animations are narrated by some guy, um, but I think they might be helpful if you'd like to look at them, just so you can see the plates moving um, kind of in the animation style. Thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you in class.